Thank you so much for checking out this free video. If you don't mind, please click like and subscribe. Uh, MJF and Hechicero. I, I don't know. I just thought he kind of threw the match to the side on Dynamite and made it seem very unimportant to the to the show. Yeah, and and I don't think it's the right style. I'm not a I'm not a fan of the match. I mean, I think that the argument is that Hechicero had a hell of a match with Brian Danielson and he had a hell of a match with Zack Saber. But MJF, you know, I mean it's it's a different style. Um he's you know <laughs> it's a it's I, I tell you what, I, I mean it's like it it you know, we kind of know where it's going. And I think that the the thing will be from from an MJF standpoint is um I don't know if he's looking for this, but if he can pull this off, I think that there's some street cred because I don't think people see him, you know, and he's not, you know, he's not Brian Danielson. He's not Zack Sabre when it comes to wrestling Hechicero. Um, But if he can pull a great, a great match out, I'm not saying it's him. It won't be Hechicero, but if they can work together, um, I think it's a real feather in MJF's cap. And if they don't, you know, it, it, it could be the one match like it's MJF and it's in long Island. So it's almost like the one thing that they got going for them is that the crowd's going to be going crazy for the match. It's like it's almost like unfailable if it, it's kept short and it's just MJF doing shtick. It's it's for sure going to make it. If it's a serious match and it's fairly good, the crowd will probably make it better. And if it falls apart, you know, it's it's it is a New York crowd. If it falls apart, it could uh it could be bad. So we'll see. Zack Sabre Jr. in Orange Cassidy. It's a weird one to me. I'm sure it'll be good. Um, I mean, I you know, I think Zack Sabre is fantastic. He's one of the best technical wrestlers I've ever seen, maybe the best. Um, and you know, Orange Cassidy is a good worker. I'm I'm interested because it's like I actually don't know who's going to win. That's Although the I, intrigue for me is who do they put over in this match? Yeah, yeah. I'm guessing Orange Cassidy, but I don't know. Um, because my this is my gut is that if if Zach like, I don't know that Zach's winning G1. He's going to do very well though. I I expect Zach Saber to be way there at the end in G1. So I think that the mentality may be that he's going to do so great in G1, so he could lose on this show as a favorite at AEW. So that's why I'm sort of leading to Orange, but maybe. If if New Japan has this idea that hey you know we don't got Osprey we don't got Okada um, and we need to make somebody and Zach's matches are always great and just put Zach on a run like they did years ago remember when Zach did that one run in G one years ago mm -hmm. and he just became this big superstar and then it kind of you know after the years it kind of faded a little bit but that one run everybody was you know this is when New Japan was way more over in this country but I remember going to PWG. And they had that run where, um, you know, Zach had tapped everybody, right? Tanahashi and Naito and everybody in, in, in that G1. And then he came and wrestled Matt Riddle in, in um, PWG and beat him there too as well. And I just remember him and Riddle, the way the crowd reacted, it was like Zach was like a freaking superstar because those people all had been paying attention to G1. So I think that they, you know, from a New Japan standpoint, they need to get him because he's, he's, he's better now than he was then and you know and he's a little bit bigger and stronger but i mean i think the thing is is that you know for, for new japan where you got to make new stars you know he's not that he's new he's been around forever but but he's a guy who like he could win g1 he he i wouldn't even think it would be impossible for him to main event the tokyo dome and if he wins, wins g1 you know obviously he will main event the tokyo dome and then we have uh, John Moxley and uh, Tetsuya Naito. This is really sort of under the radar, in a sense, for an, an IWGP championship and a match with John Moxley. It's just it doesn't seem like it's been promoted as as all that important on this show. Yeah, I agree. I agree because because you know, here's the problem: Naito's only made one appearance. True, it was this week. True. Um, Moxley's done promos. The promos have been fine, good. I mean, actually, really good. But yeah, you haven't had the face-to-face -face confrontation and things like that. So yeah, um, you know, I, I I do agree. I think it could have been built up better. But you know, the the thing is, they um, you know, they have so many matches, and um, you know, you can't build up every single match. But but yeah, I mean, is this the number two match on the show? I mean, it, you know, in theory, 
it's it should be way up there. Yeah, I mean it. It's. it's I mean, it's just, like the theory of the pay per view, like the idea of the original Forbidden Door pay per view, like this should have been a, a bigger deal, but for whatever reason. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if you look at world championships in pro wrestling, you know, you've got your your two WE belts, and you got your AEW belt, and you've got the IWGP belt, and those are the big four. So you've got this is one of the big four belts. It should be, it should be number two on this pay per view behind uh, Will Osprey and. Um, and swerve we also have mercedes monet and stephanie vacare i'm really interested in this one uh i think this is going to be great by the way stephanie vacare what is her status as far as you know the 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 two u.s companies trying to find new talent like i can't i can't i have to imagine she's on both of their radars you would think so you would think so i could see and this match, I think, is is really important to Stephanie Vacare because she had that match at Resurgence with Mercedes, and that put her on the map to a degree with the with with the hardcore watchers everything audience because she was just you know a woman from from Chile that was in uh, CMLL and CML women's matches usually aren't that good although they have gotten better in the last year, and um, so she she was just a, a, a name basically a name in the, to, to lose to Mercedes in the tournament. And they had a hell of a match. So we know that um, we know the potential is there for them to have a hell of a match. And this is obviously a much, much, much bigger stage. And yeah, there is, you know, the 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 um, the market for really good women wrestlers um, is very strong. And there she is. So I could see. I could see with if she has the match, if she has the match that she had with Mercedes last year on this show, um, where more people see it, um, I think she can make herself into a star in one night. Yep. And then we have the Elite versus Scissor Ace, I guess is the the name for the team. I when I when I was watching this, uh, I thought, oh, you know. The, the the Tanahashi video is playing and I was waiting for Okada to like react like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe that they brought. And he just he didn't really react. He's like, all right. The announcers um, reacted to it, but I know what you're saying. Yeah. You know yeah. what the other thing is? And I didn't even realize this. But uh, when I was talking to John LaRocca, he he said, you know, Billy Gunn must be Nostradamus because the whole thing of the promo was that the Bucks were challenging the three of them. And so Billy must have known that they were going to be challenged by the Bucks and Okada to have Tanahashi on, on, uh, on the die on the ringtone there to, to just be ready to have him, you know, do the match. I was like, yeah, he, I mean, if, if uh, Daniel Garcia uh, knew the, he thanked MJF for saving him in the future, I think, or next week, right. He said, thanks for saving me next week. There were a couple of uh, Nostradamus, situations on that show but yeah. um yeah I, I just i was like this but is that's, but that's just regular pro wrestling everyone does it uh, yeah yeah oh totally uh i just thought uh tanahashi okada is cool always it doesn't mean as much as it once did but it's still cool and so it's, i was it, happy with tanahashi being in this match it's a, it's a legendary rivalry um i mean the bucks and acclaimed i don't know what it is it's like um i i, I you know it's like it's it it maybe they can really pull it off this time. I I don't know. I'm it hasn't it hasn't hit for me. That's I'll all. tell you what though, it is a, a good opportunity for the acclaim to maybe it's a have a great best opportunity. Match a, they it's need to have their best match in a long time. It's a great opportunity for the acclaimed. Yeah, it's a great opportunity. And and look, I mean, the Bucks always have great matches on pay per views. It's like always, and so you know you you just don't bet against it. Um, and again, with FTR out of the picture and that, you know, again, that's been done a lot. It's like, I guess, you know, the acclaimed have been over in the past. Um, obviously they're not over like they were, you know, a year ago, but this is a chance to revive them. Um, they, I, I think they're probably going with that, with that group to forbidden door. Um, I mean, um, uh, blood and guts. Um, so, um, yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's a good wrestling match. Um, I'm not like that hot on Tanahashi, obviously, these days, just because he's so hurt and so bad. 
but it's a six man tag and he only has to I do think it. it'll be fun for the live crowd though because I remember when we were in Vegas last uh last month or was that last month yeah and he showed up on that collision show mm-hmm. like he didn't do anything either but just his presence just him being he's there he said he's, a, he's it's he's, awesome he's an all-time legend he's one of yeah. the greatest he's one of the greatest to ever do it so um him on the show just just having tanahashi on the show is is it is you know i'd rather it was tanahashi than billy gunn by a wide margin oh yeah absolutely yeah. uh and then danielson shingo and swerve and osprey are our last two matches there Danielson Shingo is going to be a match of the year candidate and Swerve and Osprey. I can't see it not being like a freaking killer match. Um, so yeah, like on, on paper, it's going to take a lot of people having bad days for this pay-per-view not to be one of the best that, that they've done. It's a really, this is a really strong card. Yeah. It should be a good show. I, I don't know how much of the zero hour I'll be able to watch just because four hours is already really long for me, but there's some stuff on that zero hour where if I don't get to catch it live, I'm going to need to go back and watch after. I mean, I think this is the best zero hour that they've ever done on paper. Yeah. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you? WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute... As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.